So number 12 then from paper 2 of the 2021 Advanced Higher Maths 8 mark question for equations of lines and planes. So what does it say? Part A, find the Cartesian equation of a plane, which you have to call pi 1, which contains these three points. Well, in three dimensions, to get the equation of a line, you need a point on it and a direction to head in, and that will take you to any point on the line by taking steps of that direction. For a plane, you need a point on it, but two directions. So following steps in those directions can take you to any point on the plane. Now, doing that would give you the vector equation, though, because you're using vectors to step your way towards it. Or it's offspring, parametric equations, which just means plucking the components out of the vector equation. The Cartesian equation that's wanted here is the one that connects the coordinates of points that lie in the plane. And to get that, you still need the two directions in the case of the plane, but instead of having two directions to follow, you use the vector product, the cross product, to get the normal vector to the plane. And then you use that to find a connection with points in the plane by using the scalar product. But anyway, that's slightly further on. The first step is we need two vectors. If you want the equation of a plane, then it all depends how much information you've got to start with. You can either start from scratch, you can go off to B and Q and get the components. So you can get these parts here and then start building it all up, build up the two vectors and then get the normal vector. Or you might be told to point on it in two directions. So that's slightly faster, that's like a flat pack version of it. Or maybe better than that, you're told to point on it and you know it's normal. So that's almost ready made, or you can just get it off the shelf and tell you the equation. But you're right back to scratch here. You're gonna to have to build it yourself, so I'll need two directions. So if you take AB, the directed line segment AB, I've got these three points, A, B and C. Of course, you can't draw them in any particular way because it's in three dimensions. It depends on your viewpoint. You can make it look however you like. So I want AB and I want AC. And then by doing AB and AC, in fact, it's actually that way. If I do AB, AC isn't it? So the normal vector is going to go down. But that doesn't matter because it's still a normal vector. So AB. Now it's an exam. You just have to set it all out. B minus A. And then also do AC. So that's C minus A. Now there's just an awful lot of replication of figures that just exist here throughout this first part A. So AB, well B is 6, negative 5, 4, and A is 4, 0, 8, just putting in the components of the position vector, which of course are the same numbers as in the coordinates, and then C, 3, 4, 11, take away the same one, so it should still be this one, 4, 0, 8, and then finally subtracting them, 6 take away 4, 2, negative 5, negative 4, 3 take away 4, negative 1, 4, 3. Now, after you've done all that, you get a mark. Now I need the normal vector. So instead of having these two directions that would just take me to any point, I want the normal vector to them. So I'm going to do AB cross AC, which means the vector product. And I'll just have the result here. Because in order to do this, I've got to replicate all these numbers again over here. So what you do is you put down the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, where the first row, i, j, k, are the three unit base vectors, direction vectors. And then if it's AB, you put AB first, 2, negative 5, negative 4. And then if it's cross AC, you put AC below it, negative 1, 4, 3. You put this down. Now, when you do that, that's the beginning of the process. So there's a mark for putting down that determinant of that 3 by 3 matrix, which will give you the normal vector. Now, you just have to work that out. So that's made up of three parts. It's I multiplied by its minor, which is whatever's left over when you knock out the row in the column. So it's these four. 
and it's the determinant of that little 2x2 two two matrix. So knocking out that eventually leaves you these. So that's 4, 3, so it'll be, that'll be the component of i, but it's minus this one. So what's its minor? When you knock out the i and the j, so you know you're always knocking out i, j and k, so you don't need to really do that bit. It's just this bit you need to knock out. So that's going to be those four. Then back to plus for the k. So knocking out the k one, these four. Two, negative five, negative one, four. You may be brave and just go straight in with the calculation, as long as you get this down. Now the calculation for a two by two determinant is just main diagonal product minus the opposite diagonal product. It's just those cross multiplications of the elements. So that's going to be, I'll just do it straight away. Negative 15, but take away negative 16 makes one. I'll put it down, even though that's just I. Six, take away four, so that's a two, but minus, so minus two, J. Eight, take away five, so that's a three, so plus three K. So I'll just put it down here. So that's one, negative two, three. Now, arriving at that, get some arc. Now I've not left myself an awful lot of room for the actual equation itself for the equation of pi 1. Now the way that you get to the Cartesian equation is by saying, well if you're sitting on a plane, well you need to have some point that fixes the plane in space and then a direction like a handle on it that gets its orientation correct. So if you've got that point and you've got this normal vector then any other point in this plane will form this little directed line segment, form this vector any other line in that plane must be perpendicular to it. In other words, the normal vector, the scalar product of the normal vector with any other vector in the plane, so that'll be PA, I'll just put that down as P minus A, the scalar product must be zero. So you could rearrange that to say N dot P must equal N dot A. That's how you'd construct the Cartesian equation of the plane. So I took too much room writing that out, so I'll just have to put it here. N dot anything will be N dot A, which means you've got this then. 1, negative 2, 3 times the general point X, Y, Z must be 1, negative 2, 3 times any particular point. You can choose any one, they'll all give the same answer. 4, O, 8. And from that, you'll get the equation of the plane. Multiplying that out, remember it's a scalar product, multiply the corresponding components and add them up. x minus 2y plus 3z equals 4 and nothing and 24, 28. Well, the fourth mark for part A. Now, that took an awful lot of writing out. And most of it was just replication of information that was there already. So all of this was just in there and all of this was just in here. When you work out this determinant here, you're only just multiplying, cross multiplying the remaining components of the other two. You could actually just do that from here. You could get to this result very quickly if you were to do this. So what do we need? I need a vector that lies in the plane. I'll have AB then. So what's AB? Going from A to B, that's two forward, that's back five, that's back four. Need another one, well, I'll have AC then. Going from A to C, that's one back, but that's four forward and three forward. Right, I've got them. What do I need? The cross product to get a perpendicular, to get the normal vector. I want AB cross AC then, because that'll do. I know how to form them. I use the cross multiplications of the remaining components. So for the I component, it'll be this pair here, so it'll be a 15. Take away a negative 16 is one. I'll do the K one next. Take away that one, so I've got an eight, take away a five, so that's a three. And the middle one, I know that's negative, so I'll do it backwards. So I'll start this way. So I've got a four, take away a six is a negative two, right, I've got that. Then to get the Cartesian equation, I know that what I'm going to do is I'll be multiplying that times 
I'll just go straight and I'll just do it. N dot P equals N dot A. Well, I know what N dot P will be. It will just be those components times X, Y, and Z. X minus 2Y plus 3Z. And N dot A, well, I've got those figures here. So I've got a 4 and a 0 and a 24 is 28. And I'll just have throw my other mark in there because there was 2 for that point. So it can be done quite quickly without replicating the numbers. But you wouldn't because you need to have this set out like this for the exam because you have to show all your working. So in part B, the plane pi 2 is parallel to pi 1. There's pi 1 up there. So it's got the same normal vector. Those components are still visible there. 1, negative 2, 3. But it passes through the origin. Well, that's easier then. So instead of using them, it's just going to be 0, 0, 0. That's why it just says state the equation for one mark. I'll put down the marker again. So you've got n dot any point on it will be n dot. In this case, it's the origin. Well, I'll just set it all out. So, but then you know it's going to be, I'll set it now. So 1, negative 2, 3 times x, y, z, which of course must be the same as that. If it's parallel to it, it'll have the same components for the normal vector. So that will just work out the same way. It's only that calculation you would need to do again. So that's also pretty pointless putting this down because that particular scale of product is just 0, 0, 0, which can only give a 0. Which means if it passes through the origin, it'll just be this with a 0 at the end. So it'll still be x minus 2y plus 3z equals 0, 0, 0, 0. That's why it said you could just state it. And then part C. A sphere touches plane pi 1 at the point A. There's the point of contact. It's also got a single point of contact with plane pi 2. So it just means it's, those are tangent planes to the sphere. Find the parametric equations of the line AQ. That's just the one mark. So what have you got? You've got a sphere. Just looking at the plane side on, there's plane pi 1 and there's plane pi 2. That's the point of contact to A and that's the point of contact at the... No, we don't know what that is. That's the point Q. There's the line that joins AQ, that's the line that you want. So here's the line L. But since those are tangents to a circle, looking at the two-dimensional section of it, that must be perpendicular, which means the direction vector of that line must be the same as the normal vector of the plane. The way you find the equation of a line is you start at any point on it, so we're starting at the point A, and then we take steps along the line in the direction that the line goes. So the way that you'd get the equation of that line would be to get to any point you like, you could call it P, but quite often you use R instead, it just means X, Y, Z. To get any to any point you like, you start at some given point and you take steps, you need some parameter to put that down, of whatever the direction vector is. And that'll take you wherever you want on the line. That's the vector equation. So that's what I'm going to set out. So I'm going to say this, for this line, which I'll just call L, to get to any point in this line, I'm going to start at A and take a certain number of steps, choose any of the letter you like, just using T here as the parameter, in the direction the line goes, which happens to be that normal vector, the one you had in part A and B. So spelling that out says X, Y, Z will be 4, 0, 8, that's where I start, plus t lots of n is 1, negative 2, 3. There's the vector equation of this line. So if you want the parametric equations, you just pick out its bits. So x will be 4 plus t, I'll put it the other way around, t plus 4. y will be just negative 2t, and z will be 3t plus the 8. That was just the one mark. So 
So in part two, so what are the coordinates of Q? Well, we'll get to Q by finding the intersection of L1 and pi 2. So I'll do L1 intersect, whoops, pi 2. That means substitute these into this equation. So instead of x, I'm going to write t plus 4. Instead of minus 2y, I'm going to write minus 2 times negative 2t. Instead of plus 3z, I'm going to write plus 3 times 3t plus 8. And that lot should come to 0. Now, substituting the components here, the parametric equation, into the line gets you the first mark. Now you just tidy it up and there you go. So add up the t's. 1 and 4 and 9 is 14. Add up the numbers. 4 and 0 and 24 is 28. So that's plus 28. I think I'll pop that over as minus 28. So now I get t equals negative 2. So what that's telling you is, how do I get to this point Q? It says I take two steps back. So that normal vector was actually going that way. So that's why I'm taking two steps back. But anyway, believe the numbers. There it is. T is negative 2. So put it back into this and you get the point Q. So I'll put x equals, that'll be, I'll just set it out. Negative 2 plus the 4. So that's 2. Y will be negative 2 times the negative 2. So that's a 4. And z will be... 3 times the negative 2 plus an 8, so that's back to a 2 again. So Q is the point, 2, 4, 2. That's the final mark.